Yeah, I think so, Be Rich. And like I mentioned that in when I wrote my short article about it, I feel like there's like this very easy bias for people towards Hearthstone because, and I experienced that too when I worked on, when I worked on, um, what's it called? When I worked on, uh, when I played a lot of Pokemon, like people that were just like, well, this can't be as good as magic, et cetera, et cetera. This hand, I also feel like magic's kind, magic's an expensive game, right? Like to get into magic and be really invested in it, you need to put in a lot of time and money. And I feel like magic players see something like Hearthstone as a threat to the money that they've invested in magic. Like people kind of tend to take things personally when you're talking about something that could be like tangentially related to the thing that they're talking about. This hand's pretty, this hand is like, we don't have a Keru and we don't have a, a way to get a Titan, even though we have double amulet and like some lands, I'm pretty sure we're supposed to mulligan this. That's true too, Shannon. It's also like, like honestly, the last three days in a row, I've opened the magic channel while I'm not streaming and be like, all right, who's streaming modern? And I like look through and I see, well, there's no one streaming modern. All right, who's streaming Hearthstone Constructed? <laughs> yeah, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure this is a mulligan. For those of you that are watching this now or you're watching this on YouTube in the future, um, this, there's gonna be a lot of mistakes today. This is a deck that's very complicated. I've played it once or twice in the past, but do not expect per perfect play. Hearthstone is very pricey. That is the opposite, that is the opposite of true. I put five dollars, five American dollars into Hearthstone, and I had a budget version of a tier one deck that was missing one singular card. I put $50 into Hearthstone, and I had two tiered decks. I put $400 into Hearthstone. I had eight decks. In relation to what people spend on magic, Hearthstone is very cheap. It's very cheap. Yeah, yeah, definitely, Magog. And one of the things I really like about Pokemon and Hearthstone is like, they're both reasonable games, but they're both very genuinely different than Magic, right? Like the type of gameplay that they generate is, um, is very reasonable. Have one tier three pile of garbage that I can call my own. Well, that, that was a good draw. It's unfortunate that we're gonna die next turn. It's unfortunate that we're gonna die next turn. So, Jub, I I really think that um I really think that people overvalue um or like the people that what's the best way I can put this? People see that Hearthstone is easy to learn, and they equate easy to learn with being easy to master. Is what is what happens with Hearthstone a lot of the time, I feel. That's that's what I feel like. Like like chess chess is a good example, right? Like chess is a game that you could teach someone how to play in less than less than a half hour, right? Chess, chess is a game that's easy, easy to teach someone the basics of how to play. It is incredibly difficult to learn all the complexities that chess has. Do you think I should double explore there? See, I think I think that's a cop out. I think that's a cop out, cop out solar sail. If that if that was true, the people that are go go look at the win rates of the people that are good Hearthstone players that do well in Hearthstone tournaments and compare them to the similar win rates of players that play on the Magic Pro Tour consistently, and you're gonna find very very similar numbers.
All right, so I hit this. So I start by playing this amulet. I can't tighten this turn though, right? So this is, I need plus two mana to tighten this turn. Azusa, Azusa is only plus one mana, right? Azusa is plus one mana. Yeah, we could have tightened this turn if I would have sequenced differently last turn. And we're just dead on board, right? They're going to get to uh, do that. This is 5, 9, 14. We could find another amulet. Yeah, that's true. No, Azusa's only plus one mana. Azusa, Azusa's only plus one mana. She gives you two land drops, which is four mana, and she costs three, so she nets you plus one. We are one short this turn. If we would have hit another amulet here, we would have been able to go off. Um, this explorer gives us a redraw, right? Because technically, technically it's free. Since it gives us another land drop. I guess I could have played Azusa there too by flipping my bounce land back to my hand. But like, even if we tightened them there, I guess they would have had to block a little bit. We would have only been attacking. No, they wouldn't have even had to block, right? Because we'd only be attacking for 16. They wouldn't have been able to shock this in, but we'd still potentially be done in the crackback depending on what they have. I don't think I've ever heard anyone accuse this deck of being easy, Namachill. This deck has a lot going on. Are we dead to that, Shockland? This is a uh, four, eight, 12. Yeah, that's lethal. Hey, Red Dolph. Thank you very much for the Twitch Prime support. I do appreciate that. I know there's a lot of excellent people streaming on Twitch right now, so appreciate you choosing to support my content this month. So Return and Fire Spout are obviously good here. Engineered Explosives is fine. Dismember could be okay. This is not a Pact of Negation matchup. It's not a Bajuka Bog matchup. Um, I think we can board down to 26 lands. I think I can cut. I guess cutting this Ghost Quarter is probably better than cutting the Cavern. I don't know who we're playing, but I want to board in Rurkthar. Get out of here. There's a Sage in our main deck. I guess I don't need Sage in this matchup, right? Leave this Ghost Quarter in. Do I want do I want these dismembers? One of these dismembers seems fine. I think dismembers okay. I'm gonna do this. You were asking about Brawl, LOQ. Yeah, yeah, I think we're gonna try a I'm just so torn on Brawl because best of one is so fucking miserable. It's so miserable. I just, I feel like I have one Brawl deck in the queue that I accepted earlier. Maybe we'll try a trial run with that and see how it goes like I did with, like I did with Standard yesterday and just see how it feels. I don't know. I just, I feel like I'm going to get frustrated playing best of one and like being frustrated isn't good content. This sounds okay. It doesn't have an amulet, but like, it's like seems reasonable on the play. 
You think Corner Queen is good? It seems a little slow. I feel like when the opponent kills us, like a game where we're intending to block a bunch of their stuff, we're probably not winning, right? You know, I should have brought in both dismembers because they're playing the devoted druid build. That's definitely what should have happened. I should have brought in both dismembers because they're playing devoted druid. Standard felt like it dragged indefinitely. The, you couldn't get gun, gun dog. I got two and a half matches into standard and just had to stop playing. I was just so bored. Which is, which is very subjective. I'm aware that that is a subjective measurement, but that is, that is what happened. All right. So if I... Yeah, I think I'm just gonna like play this and pop it, right? Like not close. Clean them up. Clean up on aisle three. There's elf guts everywhere. Send a message. My plant doesn't have Defender anymore. Got to remind my opponent that it can get in there. I mean, do we really need to hold a bounce land when we, we like have this many lands in hand altogether? So if you look at the, watch the green white elves video that we played two days ago or yesterday, yesterday morning, uh, Ross Miriam's elves deck from the Grand Prix was playing a copy of Boreal, two copies of Boreal Druid. So, I think I just want to kill their board again. I'm just going to go get my other explosives here. Just death to my enemies. Kill, kill all of the tiny mana producing green people. These were made just for you opponent. Well, that's not even close to being true. Guess who's back? Back again. Amulet's back. Tell a friend. Guess who's back? Do 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 I created a monster. Nobody wants to see Titan no more. They want do 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 do. Yeah, Pilgrim's a human. Pilgrim, Pilgrim's a human, which is relevant. Boros Garrison, Flesh Slayer Stronghold. Untap the things. I'm gonna bounce this gemstone mine to my hand. Actually, I probably wanna bounce the Boros Garrison, right? I haven't played any lands yet this turn either, so we can just floop this back and forth real quick here. Playing the other another Titan doesn't really do anything for me this turn though. Is the is the thing. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna double strike it. Give my give my homie double strike.
I I agree. The people the people that are saying standard is excellent right now, you don't understand how and what makes standard formats good. Um standard might be excellent right now, but the educated answer, the informed answer is I don't we don't actually know. Uh, I can just kill them, right? I get the Suva and a gemstone mine here and give this two more attack. So I'm gonna copy Slayer Stronghold. This actually isn't quite lethal, right? They're gonna go to one. No, that's not true. Yeah, yeah, dead zone, 18U. Got it, we figured it out. I mean, not everything can be the best standard format of all time, but like, again, just like temper your expectations. It's okay. Wait until we have a pro tour. And remember, the, the, the important thing to remember, the thing we talk about constantly on this channel, a solved standard format is not a bad standard format. A bad standard format is a bad standard format. So just, just because we know all the decks that are good doesn't mean the format is bad. We can know every good deck in a format and it can still create lots of enjoyable games of Magic the Gathering. When standard is bad is when the games aren't fun, when the games aren't interesting, when the gameplay isn't dynamic. That's, that's when standard isn't good. What was my favorite standard ever and why? I really liked um, Innistrad RTR standard, so I got to play Teamer Flash, and I'm a sucker for a bad Flash deck. That's pretty good, yeah. That's a pretty good one, yeah. I'm gonna bounce this forest. Does playing this out for one even accomplish anything? It really doesn't, right? Yep. I want to I want to feel like the decisions I'm making are having a relevant impact on the game. I also want to feel like I like I'm getting to What's the best way to phrase it? I want to feel like I have a, I have a small amount of decks to pick from. I want to feel like there are some tier two decks in the format that like aren't going to get immediately crushed, even if they're not the best. What's the best company deck in this format, in my opinion? I think it's Elves. I think Elves is a very reasonable linear deck. I think in terms of in terms of raw power level, Elves is probably the best of the decks that can play Collected Company. Oh. I'm going to try something. Hold on. Just had a light bulb moment. I was thinking I kind of want a footrest for under my desk. And then I realized I had a thing next to me that I could definitely use as a footrest for under my desk. Oh, God, that's life changing. Look at that. Oh, baby. That's great. Would you play Legacy Burn as a donation deck? No, I don't think so. I really don't think Legacy Burn is a very good deck. Um, if you haven't seen us play the Delver Burn deck before, I think Delver Burn is a good version of Burn, basically. What's my favorite deck to play in Modern currently? I've really been enjoying playing Green Black mid-range. That's the deck I'm going to be taking to Louisville in a couple of weeks. Next weekend? Gosh, it's next weekend already, isn't it? Next weekend, if you're going to be at the Open in Kentucky, feel free to come say hello. I always love meeting people. Why do I dislike Hate Bears so much? I dislike the Hate Bears deck because I feel like 
the power level that the deck has is aggressively mediocre. What do you think could improve the archetype? Stoneforge Mystic. I think I think the the Hate Bears decks in Modern, the fact that they are playing a card like Leon and Arbiter, that's just like a really mediocre power level card, is not stellar. We're just gonna die here, right? There's like getting another Arc Druid and they're gonna kill me. I assume this is just another Arc Druid. If this isn't an Arc Druid, I can play two Bounce Lands and Ballista kill their existing Arc Druid and maybe have a chance here, but this feels like they're getting another Arc Druid. Oh, they're Rex Saging me. Yes, that is 10 out of 10 what they're doing. That's fine. That's fine. I assume we're dead here. I probably should have kept the green bounce land in my hand. And four stone forge just in case. Yep. I should do a vlog while I'm in Kentucky. Like, like talk into my phone while I'm playing the event. Is that something people are into? Do people watch that kind of stuff? Maybe that's not a bad idea. I could leverage leverage a weekend trip as a as content that way. What's going on, Aaron? Are we dead on board? I think we're dead on board. That sounds right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely getting out linear, Aaron. We uh, we killed them with engineered explosives in the first game because they stumbled, or the second game because they stumbled a little bit. In the first game, I think I definitely missed sequence, but I don't think it ended up mattering. Uh, people have mentioned the brawl update in chat. If why haven't classic, why have classic company good stuff decks like Bant been pushed out of modern? Because they are slow and they are clunky. Decks like that that are leaning on three and four mana spells have a hard time keeping up with the linear decks in the format that demand you have answers quickly. There are, there are a lot of decks in the format where when your first piece of interaction is on turn three or turn four, that's far too slow. And a lot of the good combo decks in the format can beat a single piece of interaction. You're not, I am not allowed to film myself while I play. That is not an option. So I can't, I can't like dash cam record myself basically while I play the match. Yes, yeah, so let's let's do a rough count here. So they can activate this for seven mana, which lets them attack for five, ten, and then eleven. So they can only attack for twenty-two this turn. So we're actually not dead because I bounced and replayed the Radiant Fountain. That being said, uh, I think I'm just going to concede here. Do we have? I don't have any cards that let me come back from this, right? If they're smart, they're not going to overrun here. Yeah, like. If I, I could have drawn a sweeper here, but like now we're just gonna be dead next turn. Cause like playing Ballista and this doesn't matter. Oh, I guess I can kill this, right? I'm a liar. 
I can kill this. Six mana, lightning bolt, Shurizuri. They only have one card left. So this can't regenerate itself. It can only regenerate other elves. So we can kill the Azuri. We can't kill the Arc Druid because they'd regenerate that, but we can take the Azuri off the table. Oh, they're just going to overrun. That's This is our line, chat. This is our line, okay? This is all I got. Oh, opponent, come on. Just let me try and get you. If you have an Esper mana, deck, mana base, what's the best deck you could make? There aren't really any good Esper decks in modern. There was actually an Esper deck that won the Modern Classic recently, but I don't know if that's very good in general. Control decks in Modern in general tend to be pretty clunky. All right, all right, all right, all right. 0-1, oh a little bit of a rough start. Let's see if we can outlinear our next opponent here. Esper Gorio is okay. A deck's really clunky in modern in general in comparison to like the decks that are good though. Pretty sure we're supposed to keep this. Yeah, it's just like it needs a Titan, right? I assume when they mean Esper mana base, they mean like fetches and shock lands, and Adol Gems doesn't generally play fetches and shock lands, but that's true. That is an Esper colored deck. Ooh, Sliver Hive. This is just going to be like the Tribal League. So, opponent's deck is an aggro deck at its heart. So, gaining more health with the Radiant Fountain will be good. We have a Titan in two turns, so we can transmute the Teleria West for a Pact. Next turn, I have up to eight mana, right? So, I can put two lands into play. Did someone say best Coco deck? That's true. Someone was just asking about the best company deck in modern. And I'm not just saying that because I've got hundreds of them under my bed. And now, these slivers are huge, chat. These huge, huge tracks of slivers. This could find us another amulet and then we could do stuff this turn. Uh, that means we get to tighten them this turn, right? Does it, or am I short? I'm short, right? Cause I have to put this into play. I'm one short. Oh, I could have bounced the Simic. Yep, yep, fucked it up. I could have tightened them this turn, so. I could have put this into play and bounced the Simic and then put the Simic into play again with this and then with double, double amulet, that's enough there. Yep. So instead of playing this, I could have put this into play, floated mana here, returned this to my hand. 
Any chance we go back to X at any point? I, I'm probably not big Nuki. Probably not big Nuki, if I'm being honest. I appreciate the support. I understand if you're primarily a hex player at this point and you drop off though. All of their slivers are as big as our titans, chat. All of their slivers are as big as our titans. Oh no, they are literally, literally as big as our titans. Um, I play with whatever sleeves the people lending me cards insist I play with. I prefer to play single sleeve because single sleeve cards riffle shuffle nicer, but if people prefer I play their cards double sleeved, I just use whatever they prefer. Oh, we can get EE for two. Oh, that's great. That's just good, clean living. That's just good, clean living, Jet. I check for EE with this first before we tighten. Summoner's back for Feldar, right? Well, if I find the explosives naturally, I can tighten and attack with it this turn, right? I think I have enough mana for that. Yeah, I definitely have enough mana for that. Do I have enough mana for that anyways? Actually unsure. Doesn't really matter what I get here. All right, so well, summoners packed. Oh, did I see it on the first stirrings? How is that you play other people's decks in paper? Well, you ask people really nicely, hey, will you lend me your magic deck? And then sometimes they say yes if they like you. Beg, beg, borrow, steal. Don't actually steal. Ask nicely. So for those of you that have never seen this deck before, so when the Titan comes into play, it gets to get a bounce land plus a Teleria West here. And then, oh, I need to stack these in the stupid way, right? No, that's not with this. I could just do this. They still they still haven't fixed this bug. What's the appropriate collateral for a high-priced magic deck if the person doesn't know you too well, but they're trusting? I don't think I've ever given someone collateral for a magic deck. I don't I don't think you should probably lend cards to someone that you feel like if you feel if you feel like you need to get collateral for someone for lending them a deck, you probably just shouldn't lend them the deck. You should probably probably err on the side of not giving it out. Magic decks are expensive and you should only give them to people that you trust. That's weird. Where all their slivers go, chat? Where where did all their slivers go? Is Magic Online bugged? They all disappeared. Bye bye slivers. We definitely had enough mana to get another Titan there. That is, that is true. I could have, I could have gotten a second Titan. No, I don't own paper magic cards. The only paper magic cards I own are effectively bulk. You know, the only the only magic cards I own that aren't effectively bulk are um 
are what's it called are uh, framed. All right, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna put another Titan into play this turn. Cause why not? What framed cards do I have? I have a Gliss of the Traitor, a Spell Stutter Spray. Um, I don't think I framed the Kiki Jiki in the Court of Calling and the Resto yet. But I know I have frames on Glissa and Spell Stutter Spray, which let's be fair, I guess those probably qualify as bulk at this point. Those probably qualify as bulk. Is FNM Spell Stutter worth that much? It is the fancy promo Spell Stutter, to be fair. I like how they're still playing Magic. They're just like, nah, brah, I got this. like ten dollars yeah there were a couple of lines to be more aggressive this game aaron i could have i could have uh, gotten two titans the turn i i could have put a second titan into play the turn i engineered explosives gliss of the traitor was the crappy bulk rare that my first open top eight deck was built around so the first the first open that i ever top aided i had four gliss of the traitors in my deck it was back during Delver Blue White Standard, during uh, Innistrad uh, New Phyrexia Standard. All right. Is this Explosives cards good, chat? What do we think? Should we board in an extra one of those? How do we, how do we feel about this Engineered Explosives card? You think we want the dismembers? The battle is just gonna be small, right? Dis the the queen sounds good. The queen's gonna like trade with their stuff. All right, what would you what would you cut, Aaron? You want to bring in the dismembers? I trust you for sure, sure. Yeah, Hornet Queen is much better against elves because they're not going to combo kill us. I don't know if I'd quantify it as Super Friends. It had Garrick, Relentless, and Liliana the Veil in it. Got two Explorers and an Azusa. Oh, you have four Azusas in here. Yeah, that makes sense. And I could trim Bajuka Bog, right? You can always trim at least one land against decks where you don't need said utility land. Bog's the worst of the utility lands if they're not a graveyard based deck. I think Ballista's fine. Play the same deck until you're familiar. Maybe it depends on what your goal is, right? Like variety is the spice of life. So if you're if you're really enjoying play, if you enjoy playing variety of things, like there's nothing wrong with that. I don't know if I ever played that deck in Cincinnati, Reverend. 
The open I top aided was in Des Moines, and I definitely played it in Collinsville. My gut says this is a mulligan. It just doesn't really do anything, but I guess it's pretty good if we get a bounce land or two. This is pretty good if we get a bounce land or two. The fire spout like kind of bridges us sometime. The fact that we have two gem, we'd, have, we'd effectively have two gemstones mine is kind of scary though. Sand seems much better. I'm gonna bottom that. Rest in peace indeed, Summer Bloom. Hey, things are coming together nicely. Looking for bounce lands and amulets. So I think if that if there had been a bounce land in there, I might have taken a bounce land over this just because I'm short on mana, but I don't think taking a basic or a cavern is better than taking an amulet at this point. Am I just gonna play this explosives out on two this turn? I feel like I am. If I don't draw a bounce land naturally, I think I'm just gonna play the explosives out. I hit a land naturally. I think this means I'm gonna go ahead and just explore here. They will have, they will have ways to interact with our amulet post board. They can have like a uh, harmonic sliver to destroy an artifact. Yep. Actually makes our engineered explosives marginally worse too. Playing the vial out is interesting because this trigger isn't optional. They have to destroy an artifact or enchantment. Yeah, after after magic today, we're gonna do some Hearthstone Bardic. Planning to do magic for another three and a half hours or so. We'll see how the leagues end up lining up. So if they put any slivers into play here, the Aether Vial is going to die. Good use of Aether Vial, just like a, a suspend gain one mana. I don't know if the opponent realized that was going to happen. No one, one sad little cupcake. We did, in fact, board in Hornet Queen. I'm not sure we can beat Necrotic Sliver. If 
Fire spout there would have been the nut. I'm pretty sure I need to play this out just to do damage control. Just like keep their board in touch and check. This way they have to choose between holding up necrotic sliver activations or using their creature lands. The problem is that like this just turns every sliver into a stone rain if they want to. They can even turn their muta vault into a stone rain. There are there are a lot of slivers in their deck, you're not wrong. What's my opinion on buttered rolls? Does my dad bod not not really show what my opinion on buttered rolls is? Yeah, we just need to get some lands here. Get to the next one. A little bit a little bit too much clunk in the trunk here. Right? Why aren't they? Why aren't these things elevated? Does does Arena put flying creatures above the ground a little bit? What do I think of this deck compared to Valakut? Well, I think Valakut is a really boring linear deck that creates uninteresting games, and I think this deck has toolboxes for his toolboxes for his toolboxes. So I'm a big fan of toolboxes for my toolboxes for my toolboxes. In terms of raw power level, I think the assessment that you just made is probably correct there. I think the Valakut deck's probably a turn and a half to two turns slower than this deck on average, but it's also much more consistent. Like you just kind of saw like, sometimes you just kind of flop around and don't do anything. In the Amulet Titan versus Valakut, Amulet Titan is almost certainly favored. As far as against the field goes, though, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if the other deck is a little bit better, just because it's a little bit more consistent. Like the Valakut deck, pretty consistently has people dead by five. Yeah, no, no tireless trackers in this build is interesting. A lot of the configurations of Amulet often play that card. Oh, I should hold the bounce land for in case we draw an Amulet. Yeah, you're right. I'll hold that one. I'll hold that one. It's fine, I knew it was on top, it's cool. It all worked out. This is a no justice stream. You gotta gotta remember none none of that justice stuff here. What's your opinion on pizza eating turtles trained by the rats to be ninjas in the sewers? I mean, pizza is excellent. That's another thing my physique translates. I think pizza is excellent. They get to crack us for five here, or they get to crack us for three because they activated the summoning sick muta vault. Just magic online things. Peace, Aaron. Thanks for the tips while you were here. I like pineapple on pizza. 
Pineapple on pizza accompanied by barbecue sauce, also A+. Plus. And like here, so like, uh, okay, so I, I messed up, I think. Um, I should have put this into play that turn because I was only one land off of casting Hornet Queen. Whereas before we were multiple lands off, which made it right to hold the bounce land. But because I I was only one land off at that point, I should have put the growth chamber to play because we were much more likely to draw an untapped mana source than we were to draw an amulet there. <clears throat> Yep, so now now we're gonna take a seven ball here that I didn't have to take. And and like now again, like we're a whole turn behind, so like I could have been tightening them this turn as opposed to putting this out now and then tightening them next turn. Would you say Amulet Titan is a lot like Lantern? They both run artifacts. That's true. That is like the most Twitch chat comparison I've ever heard. That's fantastic. Macaroni and cheese pizza. I actually have. There was a place in, gosh, where were we? I think it was an East Coast open that they had mac and cheese pizza that Matt and I went to. And it was, it was actually very good. It was actually very good. Can we give Titan haste here? I think I'd rather just go get engineered explosives, right? I think I'd rather just go get engineered explosives. Stay for the recipes, yep. It's all about it's all about that cooking advice, right? It's where I can insert a homemade pizza pick of my own. Eat, play, rant. Look, as a connoisseur of frozen foods, pineapple does go on pizza. Big beanie cap. Thank you for the bits. And for the record, I'm a vegetarian, so I just eat just just pineapple. I don't. I don't eat other things with it. It's just it's just pineapple and cheese. And actually, with barbecue sauce instead of the pizza sauce, it's quite good. It's quite good. Huh. So obviously I should attack with this Titan to try and induce bad blocks, right? I should attack with the Titan in the hope that they make bad blocks. 
I'm gonna go get another Chilaria West so we can get more Titans later. I mean, do I need to be that aggressive? Do I need to be that aggressive? The, the lines with Tribe Scout and picking up lands inside of combat so you can replay them back down is really neat though. I hadn't realized how many of those lines this deck has access to. Um, so I'm... We could actually get into a little bit of trouble here if they hit Mana Sliver plus Land Destruction Sliver, but instead they just hit two, two, two Mana Slivers. Yeah, I agree. I think I think most of our roads were heading towards Rome once we had the Hornet Queen. This is I heard that there's this sliver queen, but this is this is the real queen of modern right here. Her and her her little bee friends. Bzz, zoop, bzz, zoop. Everyone's having a good Thursday out there, hanging out, playing some modern today. You've got three more matches after this one in the league with this deck. We're going to play some Bant Spirits, and we're going to mosey on over to some Hearthstone, I think. Well, now we have to blow this up because this will give their, their slivers regenerate, and I want none of that. Let's clear these two drops right on out. My wife and I make a combination pizza that consists of homemade dough, pizza sauce, goat cheese, mozzarella. I really like goat cheese. It's one of my favorites. Black olives and diced peppers and onions and white mushrooms. It sounds decent. I really like goat cheese. Goat cheese and, oh God, what's the, what's the, no, that's goat cheese. Yeah, goat cheese on pizza is great. Well, no, they have all of these things make mana while mana weft swiver is in play. And these all have haste, so they had a lot of black mana there, actually. My second to last final awesome pester. Where are you graduating from? Can we move black green up in the queue? Sounds good, Drowning Cow Live. And then uh, Drowning Cow, just so I know, are those 300 bits for um, a viewer's iteration of Black Green with Dark Confidant in it, or the iteration of Black Green that I've been working on with Tireless Tracker? So just let me let me know which one you want me to put that towards. Thanks everyone for hanging out here today. Hope everyone's having a great weekend. Hope everyone's enjoying the nice weather that we're finally having. Hope everyone's getting ready to enjoying some getting ready for graduations like pasture just ready for the summer uh my name is jeff hoagland i'm a full-time streamer and content producer here on twitch we're playing some modern some amulet titan right now if you're enjoying my stuff please consider subscribing on twitch my subscribers are the reason i'm able to do what i do as often as i do it they're a big part of why i'm here full-time now you can also support myself by supporting my sponsors mtgotraders.com we'll have to buy and sell some magic online cards with you and if you use code hoagland paypal at checkout with them you'll save eight percent on your singles orders there CoolStuffInc.com buys and sells a lot of cool stuff, including TCD singles using promo code Jeff5. You can save 5% on Magic, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh cards with them. And Mac Weldon, they provide premium men's clothing using code Jeff Hoagland. You can save 20% on your first order there at bit.ly forward slash Google Clothes. Any rate, we're one and one in this league with Amulet Titan heading on into the third match here soon. Yeah, Blur, I posted. I posted the article. I'm also graduating this Saturday. Cheers to all the Google grads. Thanks for the bits, Dad. Congrats on wrapping it up. Light, life after college kind of feels, or in my case, it felt kind of surreal because I was someone who always worked full time during undergrad. So like when I graduated and like just had a job, it was like, uh, what do I do with all this time? So I'm like used to like juggling 12 to 15 credit hours a semester on top of working.
absolutely love meat, but I could probably go vegetarian if I needed to. So I'm just a vegetarian because I don't really like meat. $12 donation for pizzas. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, that, that was actually a very good pickup here. Hopefully we can find an amulet forest. Cast demonic tutor. That's sad. Black Cleave Cliff means we probably don't need a Cavern of Souls. I'm just gonna grab a basic forest here. They could be uh they could be a Blood Moon deck. Democracy for Tracker, Black Green, definitely my favorite modern deck right now. Thanks for the bits, big beanie cap. I appreciate it. I just turned that extra work into extra sleep. That's fair. All right, looks like we're playing against weaponized variants here. So next turn, we'll probably go forest, cast, explore. Well, that that changes everything. Um, that that changes all all of my plans. Mm. Did I mess up? Was I supposed to have played the forest there and then cast the amulet off the forest? Because I really don't want to play the bounce land out yet, right? Yeah, yeah, I think I messed that up. I think I messed that up. Um, the list I posted in my article was the same one I played last time. I'm pretty, pretty happy with the main deck I have right now. The, the main deck we played last time felt really good. All right, so... I'm gonna play this Radiant Fountain, I think. And then... I think I definitely wanna just play the Rex Sage this turn, right? Just take this off the table. Or do I not care? I, I could play this and it could just die is the problem. Yeah, I'm gonna cast the Rex Sage and just kill their thing. Turning turning some of your extra time into gym time is good. Azusa doesn't let me cast. Azusa didn't. Did Azusa let me cast Titan there? It doesn't, right? It definitely didn't with Lightning Bolt. Yeah, you can't Azusa. Yeah, if well, if I didn't play the Forest. I'd have one, two, three, four, five, six. I only have eight mana there. Remember, the turn you play Azusa, she's only plus one mana with the bounce land because she lets you play a bounce land twice, which makes four mana. Yeah, so my, my math wasn't bad there. All right, so we lose our explorer. So I'm really glad that I didn't play the Azusa that turn. We would have just taken a bunch of damage and she just would have died. That's not, that's not how the math works out. I would have had three plus four is seven, or I could have played this two, three times, which would have been six plus two, which is eight. Take a break while you learn to count. Um, well, now I'm just gonna play the Azusa, right? Yeah, it's just Azusa pass. And then they burn through a lot of removal here. They're down two bolts and a collective brutality. So maybe this bounce land lets us stick the Titan next turn.
Oh yeah, if they kill this, I still get to go Azusa into this three times, which is Titan next turn regardless. Yep. The unfortunate part here is our opponent is not dead next turn, right? We're only attacking for a little bit. That being said, I do get to go get some nice utility lands, right? Like I'm gonna be able to replay this Radiant Fountain here at some point to gain two more life. I'm gonna be able to go get a Colony Garden to make a blocker. I'm actually gonna bounce the Radiant Fountain at this point because I have plenty of mana. Boros Garrison and Slayer Stronghold. I'm gonna bounce this Radiant Fountain back to my hand again. Oh, I, I guess I could have vesuva the Radiant Fountain, right, if I wanted to. I think I'm just gonna go get Colony Garden plus a Bounce Land here. Yep, we've had enough. They understand the writing's on the wall. Dismember seems great here. The main deck Rex Sage seems good. Relic seems fine. I actually don't think Engineer Explosives is very good here. Like their, their casting costs all vary quite a bit. And like killing two and three mana things with this is pretty bad. <laughs> Frozen Donkey, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime support. And there's a lot of excellent people streaming on Twitch right now, so I appreciate you choosing to support my content with your Twitch Prime this month, so thank you for that. Plus three Opes didn't bail off. Yep, get in my deck. Cards that are good against weaponized variants, that one. All right, uh, I'm gonna cut Ghost Quarter because we don't really need that here. Yeah, Horde Queen's probably fine. Walking Bliss is probably not very good, right? Rorikthar is fine because he's easy to play under Blood Moon. I like that logic. I like that logic. I'm going to trim... I feel like they're going to have a lot of ways to make Azusa eat it, but she's also pretty powerful. What else do I want to cut here? I feel like I don't want to go much lower than 27 lands. This is a matchup where I don't want Bog, or where I want Bog. Is Relic too slow? Relic's too slow against them a lot of the time. I'm actually not going to board it in. I feel like I'm overboarding at this point, so I just want to, like, have fewer cards. I'm going to trim two Explorers and Azusa, and I'm not going to board this in. I would accept that, like, if someone with more experience came back and said, you should really play the Relics, but I really feel like Relic's just irrelevant to this matchup a lot of the time. Please give me a turn 1-4-4. You can GQ yourself to get a forest. That's a good point. Okay. Very unlucky. Didn't get burning inquiry. I don't know if that's true. Like explore helps us advance our primary game plan, right? Whereas like relic definitely does not. I'm just gonna bog them to try and keep them off an early delve threat here. I think this is right. I also got a Faithless Looting out of their bin. Like they could have played a Tassiger this turn. I mean, the Explorer looks much better than a Relic here, right? Please don't take my Baloth. 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 Yes! We still have our Baloth. Well, that schedule change monthly. It's hard for me to catch Hearthstone at that time since I'm getting off work and getting ready to cook for the family. We ever switch to some Hearthstone at night at some point. Um, the schedule's definitely never 100% set in stone, but uh, my hope or my goal is to keep the approximate schedule that I have for Hearthstone right now um, probably through the end of June, but we'll, we'll see how, how good that time flood is and like how the streams overall are going. 
It's the Hearthstone numbers are better if I start with Magic, just because like I don't have a large Hearthstone audience right now, so some of my Magic audience translates into some Hearthstone audience. I could maybe play the Bell off this turn, but eh. I think I'm just gonna bog them again next turn, right? Sure. So we're two turns away from a Titan. I wonder if it's right to play the Baloth out or just keep leaving it in my hand to like disincentivize a Burning Inquiry. Keep on keeping on. Schmidt Word, thank you very much for the three-month three subscription. I do appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thanks for the continued support. All right. Well, replaying the bog is no longer an option. Untapped land would be the nut here. Let us put Primeval Titan into play. Yeah, yeah, definitely be rich. In fact, there's uh, six or seven Hearthstone videos on there on YouTube now already. So everything, everything heads to the YouTube channel as always. All right, am I supposed to get a third basic forest here? I think I'm gonna get a gemstone mine for now because I would rather be able to transmute the Stellaria West next turn. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the low latency. Low low latency streaming sounds fantastic. Azusa. All right, so what am I doing here? I think we're to start by just attacking with this, right? Yeah, I'm one mana off of transmute, plus two other stuff this turn. For those of you that haven't heard, Twitch is going to be coming out with a low latency option, which will enable you to have a sub five second delay to the streamer a lot of the time, and often cases less than one second. Currently about 25% of streamers on Twitch have access to the low latency mode, and by the end of the month, all of us should have access to it. Stronghold could give future Titans haze. That's a good point. And I, I feel like we're getting to an all roads lead to Rome type situation. That wasn't what I wanted to do. I definitely wanted to transmute that there. Definitely meant to transmute. Just wasn't paying attention to what I was clicking on. It's fine. Like I, like I said, I think, I think most of our options are gonna get us there at this point. I'm just gonna keep holding this. Now they're just gonna jam a, yeah, I'm gonna leave that for now. I'm just gonna go get Titans next turn. Transmute for Rourk Thar. Thar would be pretty good, huh? Oh, that's true. They can't these seize or thought seize. That's or yeah, that's actually a good point. It's actually a good point. Yeah, Rourk Thar should mostly close the door here, right? You want to cast spells? That's that's great. Here's a rook Thar. That was a that was a pretty pretty convincing win. That was a pretty pretty solidly convincing win. Okay, we're two and one. Sweet. Keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on trucking. I 
Yeah, Chrome, Chromecast has a pretty pretty steep lag too. You use the Chromecast a lot. They could have just had like a bunch of Dell threats or like a bunch of blood gas and flame wake phoenixes. Just like didn't have any selection to power through it. This hand's pretty rancid, right? We're on the draw too. Deal. I don't know, probably a solid six, 6.5, seven. We are playing Hearthstone today, so we're gonna do Hearthstone every Tuesday and every Thursday. So planning to play Magic till about three o'clock this afternoon. So we're gonna finish this league and then play one to two more, depending on how long the next one takes. Another discard spell was the reason I played out the amulet as opposed to the summoner's pack, or as opposed to the, 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 the what's it called there? Hey, Zalgotha, here, have some weird polygonal money. Put this in my 400 from earlier towards Grishel Brand, 10 out of 10, will do. Thank you very much for the bits, I appreciate it. Um, you guys want to play West Out? Eh, I guess I'll just play this. They missed their land drop. That's good for us. I have another bounce land in my hand, so like playing a bounce land out there seems fine. I could have like pacted for Azusa to blank future discard, but that seems a little bit loose with this being my only piece of action. Grishel Brand, the good ape life. Yes, it is indeed, Shannon. It is indeed. When playing BBE Tribal Flames decks, are they reasonable or no? They seem fine. Most most things in Modern are gonna get that shrug for me. Seems seems fine. This is this is a format where there are dozens of different decks that you can play. It's one of the reasons why we have such variety on stream. It's quite, quite excellent. Quite excellent. Right on time, Azusa. Welcome to the party. Welcome to the party, Azusa. Thanks for being here. Thanks for showing up to work. At least to me and Spirit Guide's up front about what he wants out of life. Uh, we finished two and three with the Shadow Deck. It'll be up on YouTube here soon. And by soon, I mean later tonight. I mean, bogging them here actually isn't bad, right? Like Mardu Pyromancer needs these cards in their bin to play Magic. I'm gonna offer this trade actually. I don't think they're gonna take this. I guess if they have a, uh, my sequencing there was wrong. I should have attacked first because if they have a call against command, I would have wanted to exile their Pyromancer. Why should I keep the bounce land in hand when I'm already at six mana? What advantage does that give me? Like if my opponent were to destroy this and then I draw a Titan, I wouldn't be able to play Titan. So I don't think, I don't think I'm supposed to leave the bounce land in my hand, but if you could explain yourself, maybe you could explain differently. But in in my mind, it seems right to play to play that out there. Well, I'm just not gonna play the Teleria West, right? So like the Teleria West isn't a reason That's really sad. All right, well, we're tightening away from lethal. We're tightening away from lethal.
Bottoming two Titans there feels really bad. Bottoming two Titan there feels pretty bad. I'm gonna mute myself for a second here while I eat my delicious Sunbelt Bakery granola bar. All right, my hunger's been satisfied for now. Thank you, chat. Look, all I'm going to say is, say what you will about Hearthstone. I've never lost a game of Hearthstone because I flooded and died. That's all, that's all I'm going to say. In fact, the ramp spells in Hearthstone, when you draw a ramp spell in Hearthstone and you already have 10 mana crystals, your ramp spell draws a card. It's quite excellent. Quite, quite excellent. There are a lot of videos on YouTube of people eating really close to the microphone. For yes, yep. No, yeah, I understand. Like that's this, this is the type of deck this is, right? Like this is, and draws like this, I feel like there's enough of these that like I wouldn't want to play this deck. Like I understand that this, is, this deck's doing something that's objectively powerful, but I feel like I have enough draws like that in conjunction with the amount of losses that you're going to take to Blood Moon that I'm not super interested in playing a deck like this at, uh, at a large tournament. All right, we don't need Cavern of Souls. They're a Blood Moon deck. I like boarding out Amulet of Vigor against decks like my opponents that are gonna have a lot of removal for it. Same thing like that. So like my opponent is like 10 out of 10 boarding in a bunch of ways to shatter this amulet. So I'm gonna board them out. This is definitely a matchup where having access to Tireless Tracker is generally good. That being said, Obstinate and Baloth is not bad here. Like a 4-4 four four is just like a good body and gaining health is also relevant. Do I want these dismembers? Do I just want to become like this mono green control deck? I kind of don't hate that. You think I want to cut Explorer? I actually kind of like Explorer here just because I want to like get to my cards that are, are relevant, better, better. Oh yeah, Relic's great. Relic's great. Like Tribe Scout seems super mediocre. Like this card seems really unimpressive. Relic is very good. I agree. That should definitely be in my deck. I 
I'm gonna do this. I like I like explore more than tribe scout. By boarding out tribe scout, I'm like mostly blanking their little removal. Because they're a Blood Moon deck. The opponent's deck generally doesn't apply a ton of pressure against us, so I'm gonna keep this. I can I can like play this and like kill a Pyromancer with it, maybe. Again, I'd accept someone with more experience telling me that, hey, you should mulligan this hand, and this is why. But like generally speaking, you don't make your hand better against the deck full of thought seizes by mulliganing. You're incentivized. In the late game, Spell Pierce is not going to protect a threat. Spell Pierce is going to sit in my hand while they have 12 lands. Pacing Forest is actually a pretty good draw. It means we'll be able to pact for a Rex Sage to kill a Blood Moon. You should never mulligan because your six will be unkeepable. <laughs> that's just that's just some A plus advice right there. So if they go fetch swamp, blood moon here, we could just pack for sage and sage it next turn. Smells like lingering souls. That's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good one, yeah? That's a pretty good one, yeah? If they flash back these souls here, I'm probably, well, we're definitely gonna have, it's a real shame. It's a, it's a real shame we didn't draw a land here because if this had been a land, I could pack for Baloth and make them take Baloth. That is, that is not an option because we have another spell in our hand. We do get to transmute Teleria West for explosives and crack explosives next turn, which is nice. So if they flash back these souls, I'm just gonna do that and clean up all their pressure. If they don't flash back souls, I'm not gonna explosive just two spirit tokens. That's not enough. Do I want to just play Azusa as a ramp spell here? I think I do, since I drew another Summoner's Pact. So one of the things you wanna make sure you do when you're playing Azusa against a deck with removal, um, your opponent can't respond to your land drops, but they can respond to the triggers from your land drops. So you, if you're gonna play a land drop with a trigger, you wanna make sure it's your last land drop so that way they can't kill your Azusa before you get to play all the extra lands with her. Some Sometimes they have cards that you can't beat and then you die when they have that card. That's okay. I call that Magic the Gathering. We do, in fact, lose the game if they cast a Blood Moon here. I've got a dirty little secret for you, chat. We lose most of the games where they cast a Blood Moon. We're going to start chaining Titan starting next turn. We'll pact for a Titan. The Titan will get Teleria West. The Teleria West will get another Titan, and hopefully we'll just grind them down. Hopefully we will grind them down. 
It hurts on my insides, opponent, when you do that. I was I was a fan of my growth chamber. The Simic were growing good things in there. They were good people. They were good people, opponent. You molten rain them. You're a monster. <sighs> all I all I know is Edgar's played this deck a lot and if you follow Edgar on Twitter then you've watched him tweet a whole heck of a lot about how often he's died to Blood Moon with this deck that's all that's all I'm saying if this deck didn't care about Blood Moon it would be one of the best decks in modern, most likely. And it's not one of the best decks in modern, so. I'm gonna get another forest here, because we can not lose to a Blood Moon now, since I have this other forest in my hand. So I'm gonna get this, and I'm gonna get Bajuka Bog, right? Just like take out the back half of this Lingering Souls, make their, their Bedlam Revelers much worse. Because like I already have this Teleria West in my hand, so like I don't need to get one to get another Titan. Bog actually also lets us cast this dismember without paying health, which is nice. Nah, I think I'd rather shut off Bedlam Reveler. In general, the opponent's deck general in general, the opponent's deck often only plays one to two copies of Liliana in the Veil. So I think <clears throat> I think I'd rather play around their four of Bedlam Reveler than play and get rid of their Lingering Souls guaranteed. And like I said, this getting this other forest lets me play around a the potential uh, the potential Blood Moon. I'm gonna see if I get to attack with this. I do well. That's that's really good for us. Yep, please. Um, so now I'm going to get Radiant Fountain. Plus Colony Garden. Now I'm going to play around the what's it called? What's it? What's it? What's it? What's it? What's it? What's it? Toy. And again, I'm not going to transmute this Teleria West yet because my opponent can't discard spell a Teleria West, which is ideal for us. I guess maybe you could have argued I should have Bajuka Bogged them because they can Bedlam for seven mana here. That's fine. They're going to be dead because of this dismember. So we'll dismember their Bedlam Reveler, and then we can play the Slayer Stronghold out of our hand, which will let the Primeval Titan attack for eight. So here's the dirty little secret bonus. If you never watched that old deck played, the old Summer Bloom deck was hated, and Summer Bloom was eventually banned because of the explosive draws. But the old Summer Bloom deck was always a value Primeval Titan deck. The reason why this deck has always been good is because the first Primeval Titan finds another Primeval Titan, which finds another Primeval Titan. And you just keep chaining, chaining right on down the line. It's because even when it doesn't have its most busted draw, it gets to grind out value long term. This deck's always been very good at grinding things out. It's like Squadron Hawk, but with 6-6 six, six Tramplers, yep. Steven Speck misses the Hive Mind kills too, I'm told. <laughs> yeah, this hand's bad, right? It just doesn't have enough mana in it, and we don't have any of our basic forests. I'm going to keep this. We'll just copy whatever land they play on one. I 
I think that's actually keepable. The card's very good in this matchup. So, like, getting to bog them on one is, like, meaningful disruption. The deck, the deck has a has a lot of complexity inside of it for sure. The deck deck has a lot of different lines that you can often take. We're gonna like need. I'm gonna need to like throw up into my garbage can when we get molten rained here in a second. But sweet, we didn't get molten rained. God bless. God bless. That one can't even take my good my nice toy. I assume we're gonna lose. I guess they could lose dismember here. Like they need to. They need their threat to stick when they eventually play it out. The games we win definitely involve our opponent not having threats in this matchup. Well, that's a beating. So, I know people always boarding in Surgical is like... Is like kind of a meme on this channel, but I actually really like my opponent boarding in Surgical against us. Because if they can kill our first Titan and Surgical it, they can stop that kind of titan chain that I was talking about a second ago. So I, I actually think my opponent boarding in Surgical is reasonable in this matchup. I definitely think that card's very overboarded in Magic and Modern in general and online, but I think it's good to bring in here if they have it. We don't just use MTG Bot. We have MTG Bot, we have Stream Decker. I try to make sure that your experience watching is, is reasonable. All right, sweet. And then uh, untapped land means I get to tighten them next turn. So 4-4, four, four, go. Don't do it. God bless us. God bless us, everyone. When's my next paper tournament? I'm going to SCG Louisville next weekend. I'll be playing green-black mid-range there. It's a little unfortunate that they hit their land for this the turn I played this, but it is what it is. So there's a couple different directions we could go with this Primeval Titan. I, I think I'm just supposed to get T-West plus Growth Chamber here. Well, they did mulligan to five. I guess I could get Colony Garden to play around another to another Liliana activation. I don't hate that. Like, I don't have double blue to transmute the Teleria West anyways. Yeah, I'm going to get Colony Garden plus Growth Chamber. You could, like, also make an argument that I should just get some basic for it so I can continue playing Magic if they Blood Boon me. That's also, that's also an argument you could make. I picked up the Vesuva as opposed to something else because the, the Vesuva can be anything else. Dread Boar. Rude. I think if they plus, I'm going to bin this dismember. Yeah, I, I could have bounced the Colony Garden, but like this could be a Colony Garden if I needed to, effectively. Is the reason why I did not bounce the, the Colony Garden. Immediately punished for my decision. Ding, that's pretty good. So I have... So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. Oh, oh, <laughs> we are gonna transmute right now because if they plus the Liliana, we will pact in response for a Baloth. So this ends up a touch awkward for us because Inquisition can't take Baloth and now they know not to plus the Liliana, but I think this still ends up being fine, right? Like things end up awkward for them. I 
Vesuva will not enter as a basic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, I don't, I didn't have enough mana to pay for Pact plus Titan next turn, Zach. I didn't have enough mana to do both those things. I'm one short, right? I'd have to, I'd have to draw land. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware that we would lose. I'm aware that we would lose to a Blood Moon here. Again, magic, magic is about being able to properly identify the cards you can beat and the cards you can't beat in any given situation. And I don't think we're currently in a state this game where we can actually afford to beat a Blood Moon. So I think, oh, I could have tightened there, right? I could have tightened there because I drew the land in the pact, yeah. I, because I wasn't counting. I was I was talking to chat and not thinking about it. The reason why I didn't make the good play is because I didn't count and I didn't realize it. Chat, chat is correct that because I drew this plus this, I could have played my sixth mana source and then gotten a Titan. And then we could actually be in a spot to beat Blood Moon because the Titan would have allowed for that. It looks like the power level of our deck and the mediocreness of their draw is gonna allow us to get here though. So I'm gonna play this forest out. Am I getting a bounce land at this point? I'm just getting a Tolerio West. <laughs> Opponent commented in chat that I'd lo they'd love to see a looting or a blood moon and I said, I'd rather you didn't, thanks. We actually haven't gotten hit by a damping sphere yet. So that's nice. Yeah, this this isn't the haste land, this is the double strike land. For people wondering why I didn't just suit this up and attack. Could have gotten Bounce Land plus Haste Land and played your land for the turn. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I definitely could have done that. And then I could have gotten a forest off of off of the other one. I actually think the Jund matchup against Tron is much closer than most people think it is, and a card like Damping Sphere gives them the extra tool to kind of push it over the top. Same thing with the Black Green midrange deck where you already had Field of Ruin and Tarmogoyf as a way to pressure them. Having a Blood Moon that the Green Black deck can play is a big deal. At any rate, we're three and one in this league with Amulet Titan after fumbling around a little bit. Thank you everyone for hanging out here today. I do appreciate it. Hope everyone's having a good Thursday, good close to the end of your week, almost the weekend. Uh, my name is Jeff Hoagland. I'm a full-time streamer and content producer here on Twitch. I stream Magic 30 plus hours a week. We stream a lot of Modern, some Legacy. Uh, we might dip our toe into Brawl as well. We'll see. I also stream some Hearthstone on the channel and occasionally. If you're enjoying this stuff, uh, please check out the sponsors, inkgaming.com. We'd love to help you customize your gaming experience using code JEFF12. You can save 12% on custom playmats, mouse pads, binders, and bags there. 
Cardsphere.com would love to help you turn your magic cards into other magic cards or cash directly with other players. There's no haggling. They just take a 1% fee off the top. And of course, this stream is made possible by viewers like Anironix, Justin, Nivik, and you. If you're new to the stream and you're enjoying it, please make sure you hit the follow button. Following the stream doesn't cost you anything. It lets you know when I go live and with what. I always try and put as many of the deck names as possible that we're going to be playing on a given day in the stream title. So that way when I go live, you can know what to expect. And if you can't catch something live that sounds sweet, be sure to check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Jeff Hoagland. 100% of my streams get archived there, and I break them up by deck and by matchup, so you can watch just the stuff that you care about. You missed it. What did we lose to? We dropped match number one to uh, look like Ross Merriam's Green White Elves from the Open this past weekend. They, uh, they just lineared a lot harder than we did in games one and three. What do you think about Academy Runes in this deck to rebuy EE -E and Ballista? My gut says that when you're in a position to be finding lots of lands like that, you don't need the extra grind that an Academy Runes offers. Like, this deck already grinds pretty well with the existing tools that it has, and every colorless land you add to a deck like this comes at a very real cost. I donated a little while ago for Mono Blue Control. It's kind of my pet deck, and I keep making slight changes to it. Am I allowed to make slight edits? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. In fact, um, if you sent me a link that's like a tapped out link or a goldfish link that's linked to your account, if you just keep updating it at the link that you sent me, when we get to your deck in the queue, I'll just download it, whatever your current iteration is, and play it that day. So, so long as you're not changing the archetype that the deck is, I'm fine with you making small changes to decks that you have sitting in the donation queue as you change and test them. Because I know we have, uh, I think we're on about a four-week drag or so right now on decks waiting waiting to get played. So, if you tune and test in that time, definitely feel free to update. And thank you for the bits. Perfect. Will do. <sighs> I'm gonna play I'm playing Green Black Rock next weekend in Louisville. The the deck list that I'm currently working on for Green Black Rock will go up in an article on Gathering Magic uh tomorrow on Friday morning. And if you're one of my subscribers, I posted a preview of that article in the subscribers Discord last night. Uh this hand just needs a bounce land, right? Like a, a green bounce land in this hand's very good. Can I can I keep this? I'm gonna keep this on the draw with the scribe. Maybe I'm on the play. Am I on the play? No, I'm on the draw with a scry. I'm going to bottom another amulet. Excuse me. We really need a green source. Really want a green source. Basic mountain. That's scary. Da, 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 da. I see green, red, belcher in the donation queue, but there's no deck list. Um, Go on my YouTube channel, Valakut, and search for Jeff Hoagland, Green Red, Green Red Belcher, and find find the last modern deck list that we played. If there's if there's no deck list there, uh, if this is uh, free win red, I'm not playing the match. All right, it's free win red. God bless, God bless us, everyone. All right, and remember, if you submit a deck list and it has a mostly unwinnable matchup. Don't expect me to play those matchups if we queue into them on stream. Um, this deck's very sweet. I think uh, toolbox decks are a lot of fun. So this deck kind of scratches that itch of getting to toolbox with things. I think um, if... I think this is probably hands down the most competitive toolbox deck that exists in modern just because like... It's busted nut draw openers are just so much better than like what those fair creature toolbox decks can put together a lot of the time. Um, if you're okay losing the Blood Moon on occasion, I think this deck's a great choice. Um, I don't know that I really, this is the type of deck where you need a lot of reps in with it to know like what little details you want back and forth. The one thing, like I mentioned earlier in the league that stands out to me about this deck list is that there's no tireless trackers in it. We have Obstinate Baloth instead. Baloth was pretty good against Mardu in that Mardu matchup though. So in your opinion, do you think the Bring to Light Toolbox deck is whatever? I think that deck's a fine deck, but I think it's less powerful than this deck on average because it doesn't really have a busted nut draw. That deck's like a slower, more controlling deck with a combo finish. So while I think that's fine, Generically, I think it's less powerful than what this deck is doing on an absolute scale. 
All right, any rate, that's gonna wrap Amulet Titan up for us. Hey, Bring to Light Scape Shift top aided the last Modern Open and the last Modern Grand Prix. So it is a very reasonable tier two deck in the format. Thanks for your in-depth commentary and planning on breeding Martyr Proc to GP Vegas. Any thoughts on it? I think that deck's really sweet. I think it's got some nice grindy elements that make it very well positioned against the interactive decks in the format. And I think white sideboard cards give you access to reasonable tools against some of the unfair decks in the format. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. What are we doing?